Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Since we have been a bit late <laughs> with the whole Soviet battleship sort of new tech tree line, uh, let's make this week Soviet battleship tech tree week. And we'll kick it off with tier 8, with the Vladivostok. Now, the actual war, uh, war, wargaming wiki on warship, Warships PC claims that the ship, ship never existed and that Wargaming completely invented it. That is not entirely true. So I did a little bit of digging and with the help of some Google Translate of some Russian sites, actually came across uh, some plans and sketches that look very suspiciously like this ship. So the, the Soviet Union in the late 30s was working towards building a very large battleship. And they wanted it to be pretty much... Well, they didn't know that the, the Japanese had the Yamato, but they wanted it to be round about the most powerful that you could find. They did have some designs from the Italians, mainly the littorial designs, but in the end uh, ran their, their, own, their own things. And one of these designs was uh, leading up to the Project 22, which was uh, going to become the Soviet Soyuz, was a proposal called Battleship A which was not a fast, lightly armored battlecruiser or like supercruiser, but was an actual battleship for really mainline battleship work. It was supposed to be fast, it was supposed to be heavily armed and heavily armored. So like a little bit of everything, really. And while the ship called Vladivostok never existed and was, uh, the, the plans were never put into, uh, into actual practice, but eventually evolved into the Sovetsky Soyuz, which we're going to see at tier 9, I think, eventually, when the full tech tree comes out. Uh, the, I, I certainly seen plans that look very, very suspiciously like this ship. So uh, I don't think they made that up completely. <laughs> I think there is actually some decent foundation to, uh, to where this, uh, where, where this ship, where this ship come from, comes from. So the Vladivostok, um, it said it was built in 1943, which kind of probably would have been around the time if they had actually started because it was like 1936 1937 when they had the plans but uh, of course you know nothing really really happened because even the soviet Soyuz was never finished because well the germans invaded and then priorities shifted and people needed tanks not battleships but yeah uh the first thing that really stands out is uh that this thing is well it's big and it's got 53,000 hit points in tier 8 this should be one of the largest HP pools in tier 8, I'd say. Probably closest to uh, Bismarck interprets. But um, I think something like Roma is somewhere in the mid to higher 40s or something. Certainly the Richelieu is somewhere around 46 or 47,000 as far as I remember. So um, definitely a very, very large hit point pool. The uh, the armor is not completely bad either. It's uh, It's not German levels of citadel protection. But an, a very, very good fire and flooding resistance. Now, this is my complete build, obviously, not stock, but I think it's 20% on stock. And 15% uh, damage reduction is pretty good as well. So uh, this is a tanky ship. The maneuverability, on the other hand, is a little on the odd side. She is quick, very quick for a tier 8 battleship with 28 knots. That's pretty nice. Uh, the traverse speed is dreadful. And again, this is a fully built, fully built up ship. So 13.5 seconds for a turn time is not particularly good either. Uh, this thing, this thing maneuvers like an oil platform. <laughs> but if you keep her in a straight line, she can go actually pretty quickly. As soon as you even just think about touching the steering wheel, uh, she'll immediately slow, slow down. The guns are uh, 406 millimeter. And they come with a rather slow base reload. I think somewhere beyond 23 seconds. The range is average with 13.7 kilometers. And the damage numbers aren't terrible. The turret traverse speed kind of stands out because it is on the quick side. So while the ship doesn't steer particularly well, the turrets actually rotate reasonably quickly. For secondaries, we've got uh, six twin 150mm uh, se se main secondaries if we want with a six kilometer range which isn't, which isn't bad and we've got a bunch of hundred millimeter auto secondaries which um well as auto secondaries go 
they are there, but if you're if you're relying on those to hit destroyers, good luck <laughs> because the auto secondaries, the AI behind the auto secondaries is not particularly good. So usually, uh, if a destroyer is coming straight, uh, unless the destroyer is, is sailing straight next to you, the auto secondaries are not going to hit anything. Uh, there is a bit of a problem though with the secondaries, and uh, let, me, let me see if I can zoom in a bit and show you what I'm talking about. So it it almost looks like on paper that the secondaries can fire straight back. But I think what's happening is that, uh, at least the, is that the the two secondaries, the two main secondary turrets, these two here, uh, they are not super firing. And for the, the, the one going aft, it actually can't, um, it actually can't really align towards the rear because it would have to align slightly inwards. So the problem is if you're facing, if you're facing straight towards the rear, like you're getting chased by a destroyer, you can't get any secondaries to bear. And it's a similar problem if you're pointing ships straight forward. The secondaries have pretty, they have not the greatest angles. <laughs> so you really need to have the ship angled in in order to get the secondaries to bear, which is not usually something you want to do if you're in a close range fight with a destroyer, because then you're giving, well, too much side, and this is a very long ship, too much side of the ship uh, to, to for torpedoes. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. The thing that things that you can do with ships like the Richelieu, where you just run away, kite away, and use the secondaries to to bla blast at destroyers, you can't really do that with this thing because if you're straight, if if you're looking straight behind it, you can only use the main turret. Um, and I mean forward the same problem, but at least you got two turrets there. So in terms of AA, um, it's not great. It's not dreadful. Like it's not Roma levels of dreadful, but um, it's an okay AA, but uh, don't don't rely on it to, to save you from airplanes. Surface detection is pretty poor with 11.4 kilometers. So yeah, you, you'll be spotted. Um, a very interesting a very interesting thing in the in the Soviet battleship line so far is the ship skill. Because this ship gets the precise aiming three at tier eight. Now we're gonna have to take a quick look at the other line that has the precise aiming skills. So in this case, this would be the Yamagi. Yamagi gets a precise aiming one at tier eight. That is a significant difference. So previously the Japanese line have been the long range sniper ships. Armor not the greatest, um, but uh, pretty precise and with a precise aiming setup, uh, doing, a, doing a pretty decent job. Now, if we're looking at the tech tree, tech tree in the Japanese line, beyond the Yamagi with the Izumo, we get the precise aim two, and with the Yamato, we get the precise aim two. With the Vladivostok at tier eight, we're already getting a precise aim three. <laughs> so if we look at that, what that actually does, uh, it increases the accuracy by 45%. So um, that is significant because uh, if there's one thing that these these ships so set up wise, these are, in my opinion, kind of stepping on the, uh, or power creeping the Japanese line a little bit because they are pretty good at long range. They have two modes. They have the, at least the Vladivostok, they has the can't hit a barn from the inside mode and it has the sniper mode. So if you have the precise aiming active, you get an extremely precise ship with very flat trajectories. If you have the precise ship, uh, if you have the, the precise aim inactive, um, you, you're effectively getting an American ship, <laughs> which has certain difficulties actually hitting things at range. So, uh, yeah, let's go quickly over the rest. Uh, we've got the elite bonus. I have gone, I have tried both elite gun and uh, damage control. Ended up uh, building this more for a ta doing this a little bit more for a tank build. So with the fire flooding, fire flooding resistance here and the actual module, we get the resistance up to 25.3%. And remember, this is not just the chance of not being set on fire, but this is actually the damage reduction. So we're getting an extra 5% damage reduction out of this, uh, which is also reflected in the modules because un relatively unusually, I have gone with the damage control modification here, which, well, again, is not something I take very often these days. It's usually in slot two, either the deck protection mod or the uh, propulsion modification. But given that she has for tier eight, I find a very decent base fire and flooding resistance. 
we get it up to 25% with this setup, which means she doesn't take a huge amount of damage over time. Uh, the main battery. So one thing with the guns is while the turrets turn pretty quickly, they have a dreadfully slow reload. So the turrets themselves are super sturdy. I haven't lost a single turret in the games I've played so far and with the mod 2 in here. So it's you could go with the uh, mod 3, would be kind of an, a logical thought for something that, that, that isn't super precise. But uh, I find that on on the base, if you, if the precision, if the precise aiming is not active, it doesn't make a huge difference. And if it is active, you don't need it. <laughs> so uh, I decided to actually use this one, which um, which gives us a little bit faster reload. Also, with this change here, it means we can take the uh, fire and flood resistance elite bonus, and we can still get two salvos off while the precise aiming is active with the respective captain skills. Otherwise, you would have to take the other elite bonus, and I'm not even sure that would be enough, because that, I think, only gives you 3%. And the third slot is in steering, because, well, that's what you would do. Uh, it's still this, uh, she, she still maneuvers like a brick, so, uh, so that's the thing. The captain skills here, and... Um, I'll go into details about why I'm picking these. So underwater protection and torpedo alert is pretty straightforward. I have the high alert instead of the um, artillery maintenance. Now, here you really could use either. The thing is, the Vladivostok, like uh, some like certain other Soviet battleships, uh, gets an additional damage control kit. This is a trick. It's a trap. Don't 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 believe that. Uh, this might trick you into over eagerly using your damage controls. Don't, because the, the rules still apply. If you damage control a single fire, you'll be on triple fires in no time. Um, I, I tend to ignore this mostly, but uh, this was what it initially got me to, uh, to use the high alert. Uh, by now, after playing a bunch of battles, I probably would switch over to the artillery maintenance uh, because I haven't found a scenario where I would use the, especially with the, re the very good fire and flooding resistance as I've built it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a scenario where I would have uh, used the four damage controls in any way whatsoever. Uh, Victorious Charge makes, this makes sense. Now, Fire Supremacy, you'd ask, hey, this is a super high hit point ship, why not Survivalist? Because uh, she does get so much more precise when the precise aiming is active, and in tier eight, I actually find myself being able to use four of them throughout the battle. So uh, this is kind of more geared towards offense. And um, I'll, I'll get to that again in a minute when we're talking about the guns a little bit more. So this gives us a fourth precise aiming. Uh, generalist, yep, because reasons. Uh, marksman, that is the skill you absolutely definitely need to have. Because with this skill active, you and with the increased main, main band battery reload, you get two salvos out if you're if you're quick enough. You get two salvos out pretty on the second while the precise aiming is active. I have the extinguisher, and um, I've just put him up to tier, up to tier eight because it's a tier eight chip. But uh, yeah, obviously you would eventually want to go towards the um, the APCS. That's kind of kind of another skill. You you could you could take the close quarters, although I generally play the ship at range, and uh, not so much at uh, as a brawler, just because the maneuverability is really not great, and uh, she does struggle to defend herself from things like destroyers. Or you could go there. My expert would work as well. So uh, the guns. What, did, what I wanted to say something about the guns. Yes. So uh, these guns on paper. The main guns, they look pretty good. I mean, 1900 alpha damage and 14% fire chance is, is really, really decent. Uh, in practice, they what I find so far is that they lose penetration very, very quickly. And this might just be my impression, but um, I struggle to do damage at longer range with these guns. Now, they are precise, again, if you get the pre uh, precise aiming skill active, and you do get a decent amount of ordnance on target, but... Um, don't expect to uh, to get full pens against everything. I've bounced a fair amount of these AP shells off stuff at range. And uh, at, while at close range, they can be pretty deadly. Uh, again, the ship feels not necessarily like a close range ship because of the relatively poor maneuverability. You could probably play it as a brawler. But uh, again, also the secondary layout wasn't ideal. And... Um, 
it I, it might work, but given the meta is geared currently towards long re- long range battleship gun uh, gun duels, that's a role she fulfills pretty well. And even though the guns don't have the best penetration. That's again the reason I have the fourth precise aiming, because I want to get as much ordnance on target as possible, because I find that they are occasionally a bit questionable in terms of penetration. Alright, um, have we missed anything? Camouflage. Let's have a quick look at the historical. Gives us more hit points, as if we needed them. Uh, more range, better dispersion, and torpedo damage reduction. So yeah, uh, standard battleship stuff. There is a Red Dawn camo. Which um, I I don't know how you, where you would get this normally. It was in the um, it was in the community contributor pack more or less. I haven't used it in the battles, but this would give us um, the exact same thing, just with with a more <laughs> Soviet feel to it. I'd say um, as camos goes, this isn't completely terrible, uh, but I probably would still sail with historical. But yeah, this doesn't look completely dreadful. Like you know, it was actually quite pretty. Anyway, um, we're going to use the Seaborn, the tried and trusted Seaborn Assault, and enough enough talk. Let's uh, let's get into a battle. All right. In this first battle, it is a flat out tier eight battle, and we have North Carolina, Amagi, Black Gasconia, another Amagi, Edinburgh, Benson, and Lo Yang on the enemy team. We are playing Frozen Shelter Epicenter. So, what do you do in a long range battleship in in Epicenter? Um, skirt the the border between the outer and inner ring is kind of what I'm going to go for and try to maintain these two rings because I don't want to be in the center, especially not with two destroyers in there. But I, I can see that we, I can be either in the outer or in the, in the middle ring, depending on where we, need, uh, where we need to be and where we have the control. Because if we control these two rings, where even if the enemy team controls the center, we still have a higher points income. So uh, let's see how this develops, though. Uh, probably gonna head behind that little island there and get some island cover. Uh, the armor, like I said, does seem to hold up pretty well. So even if she comes under concentrated fire, she does seem to hold up pretty nicely. And yeah, with all the with all the the camo and the cons- uh, the consumables, the supplies, I'm getting up to fifty six thousand hit points in a tier eight battleship. That is ridiculous. So this thing is a massive tank. All right. Uh, looks like we're cut. We're getting. We are getting the outer ring, and the rest of our team, fortunately, actually, well, one destroyer seems to be heading straight for the inner ring. That's good, and he's got cruiser support. So I'm just gonna see where, where we're gonna see anything enemy-wise. Currently, we're losing. Uh, we're losing the outer ring, but uh, that's be- that's because the the cruisers have moved up to the middle. Okay, there's the Lo Yangs. So that's one of them. Can I get shot? No, I can't get shots at the Lo Yang. Sh- uh, Lo Yang is hiding behind the island. Which makes sense. And now the cruisers are disengaging because they're probably going to get shot at by battleships. And we have a single destroyer, which means we are not going to get the center ring. That's how I've expected that against two destroyers. But there's a black Cascogna over there and something else. I do have to be a b- little bit wary of Lo Yang Torps, but I don't think he came he came around enough to... Oh, okay, then there they come, yeah. But they're not going for me, they're going for the for the cruisers. All right then. Um, cruisers can deal with the Lo Yang. And um, I'm going to go into the outer ring and see if we can catch that, uh, can capture that one. There are a couple of Amagis, I just need to get around here. And I don't think they've actually, no, they haven't actually seen me. So shots out, first precise aim. And we got the outer ring. Now we are lo- in the process of losing the middle ring. Okay, one bounce off the Amagi, there come some return fire shots, but they all missed. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to get back into the center ring at some point. I do have to keep an eye on the Lo Yang, but he's on the other side. Okay, a couple more shots maybe at the Amagis there. And you see, um, my my precise aiming is just... I was just a little bit late because the, the lock-on was uh, was switching. But, um, yeah, a couple more hits. And we can use our first repair kit at this point. Not a great amount of damage we've done, but maybe we can see do something about that Gascogne over there. Because he is um, getting outflanked because the two Amagis are, ha- are heading off. And I just want to see if I can push these guys out. We're now controlling the outer. Now I'm capturing the middle ring. Okay, so we've got the, we've got what I wanted. We've got the outer and the middle ring, and enemy team holds the holds the center cup. And uh, they're calling out the black Gasconia. Yeah, he's he's overstayed his welcome. So uh, full uh, full steam ahead. I do have to keep an eye on the destroyers though in the center ring, that they're not uh, sending torpedoes out. And then black Gasconia has realized that he's overstayed, so um, he's running. But uh, yeah, it's getting some shots in. 
And I do have to keep an eye again at destroyers. Yep, there's the Luoyang. Okay, full on reverse. Yeah, Luoyang shooting at me. So there's a good chance that he's got torpedoes away or his torpedoes are on, on cooldown and he's just kind of, he's setting one fire, I don't care. Even with the four damage uh, damage, con uh, damage control kits, um, I'm not damage conning a single fire, not with a uh, fire prevention build like this. Okay, Benson and Luoyang are, are camping the center, which is the right thing to do. But I do need, and uh, with the Benson also this close, I do need, I think I'm in top range, I do need to keep an island between myself. And I see that's the thing with the precise aiming. I can fire at a Blas Black Gasconia at 11 kilometers. That's not a problem. Not at all. And I'm still getting nine, all nine shots in with one Citadel. See, this is the power of the um, level three precise aim. And I'm really going to have to think about the Japanese line because I feel like they their role has just gotten power crept massively. Because I haven't played the Yamagi, but I feel like this thing <laughs> probably... Um, Takes a bit of a crap on the Amagi, <laughs> to be honest. And see, once the precise aim is off, you're getting sh three shots in. So <laughs> that's that's the difference, right? Okay, Edinburgh, full health. Let's see if we can do something about him. Do we have to? Uh, can I get? Can I get a shot? Shot so I'm gonna. I just want to try if I can lob this, but I don't think so because the the yeah the the arcs are very flat. So this is probably gonna hit the yeah it's gonna hit the island. Um, the arcs are very flat, which makes um, occasionally. Or which may be responsible in part for the penetration problems I'm having with this thing because the flat arcs mean that you're more likely to to send the shots into the main belt and the f these, these guns are not powerful enough to punch through most of the main belts at this tier. Okay, there might be Edinburgh torps in the water but uh, Edinburgh is still one of the terrible ones. I think she got four torps, so four torps not going to kill me. Uh, I don't know where the destroyers are, but the cruisers are um, are running into the center, and uh, I just want to snipe the Black Asconia at this point. I think even if I'm over-penetrating his bow, that should be sufficient, but maybe I'll get some good, good hits in with this low health. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, uh, Edinburgh, you're next. And it looks like the, the rest of the enemy team is all sailing towards the map border for reasons unknown to man. Because, well, I, mean, I guess they don't want to win, but um, I'm pitying the destroyers, because the destroyers have done everything they could, but <laughs> uh, yeah, what are you going to do? So uh, the Gascogne is down, the Amagis have sailed away, there's a North Carolina who's outside outside all of the cup circles, and I'm starting to take pot shots at the Enbra. Um, Lo Yang spotted, okay, Enbra is down, and um, seems to have... Yeah, seems to have taken our Yugumo with him, so we've got no more destroyers, but we're holding all three rings. So there might be low young torps, so I'm just going to sail away. And now, if I put the ship straight, she will get really, really quick. As soon as you start turning, she'll slow down massively. But uh, North Carolina, hello. Uh, going to get up. You see that? As soon as I start turning, 24. <laughs> there we go. A couple of good shots. And um, yeah, let's kill that thing. And uh, I mean, we've got this in the bag. We're, we're 200 points ahead, and we're holding all the three cap circles because the the lone destroyer in the in the cap is not is up against the cruiser and um, okay, let's just kill the North Cal uh, against the cruiser and and a battleship. Okay, that's the North Carolina taken care of, and we've done our job in tanking because we'll, we'll have to have a look at the damage taken. But um, I'm down all four, uh, all three. All three damage, uh, all three repair kits, and um, but I, I'm com I can comfortably do this even while being shot at uh, without necessarily um, um, being too concerned about my health. And unfortunately, that salvo doesn't hit anymore. But yeah, um, we've done our job in tanking, I think. So um, this ship really works well at long ranges, and the armor is good enough. To also occasionally go into closer closer range fights, it's just the maneuverability where she suffers a little bit. And um, yeah, we've we've done we've done we yeah, have we've tanked six we've tanked about almost at exactly the amount of damage that we've we've dished out. So yeah, the guns are not super punchy, but um, again, this might also be down to ballistics. Let's do another one to show a slightly different angle of what we're doing here. Now, in this battle, uh, we are top tier, actually. Uh, there's Lightning, Aka and Mahan, a Martel, again an Amagi, a Bismarck and a Shokaku. Now, I've mentioned AA isn't super great. She, she can shoot down a couple of airplanes, but uh, she's not an American battleship. She's not a North Carolina that would shoot down 25 airplanes within a battle easily. But the the... 
fire prevention build or the, the, the damage over time prevention build actually makes her somewhat viable in that regard as well because she does just not take that much damage from things like fires. Okay, triple destroyers. And we only have one cruiser. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here because I'm probably going to be up against the destroyer. Uh, where am I going to go? I, I want to take right flank. I want to see where the carrier is going. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, please watch out for this because the Lebrecht Maas doesn't look like he's actually scouting, but he's going center. But we are going to get, uh, yeah, is he going? Yeah, he's going around the other side of the island. That's a very dangerous move because you are in range of the cruisers. Again, there, there she is, there's the Charles Martel. <laughs> you are in range of the cruisers if you're going. If he was air spotted, he would be in trouble already. Uh, blind, blind shot at the Martel, like this-ish, but uh, I think he's on full speed, so I probably would have to take more, a lot more lead here. Uh, yeah, that's all splashed. Okay, so we've got the Akka coming our way, and that lightning looked like he was going to go the other way. And yeah, I think the Leberich Maas has figured out that he, he doesn't want to be there. Don't go around front the island. He, um, I mean, he, he is taking the Akka under fire, which is great. So uh, let me just unload the AP and switch to the high explosive. Uh, yeah, we got two hits in, not bad. Because that's the only thing that's around here, and then we're just gonna dodge some Akatorps, although at that range they're probably not gonna hit me. Um, yeah, the Leberich Maas is overextending a bit. Fortunately, the Charles Martel is running away. Uh, otherwise, he would have been my problem to support. Okay, do I need to dodge? Do I need to? Come on, turn! Turn! Okay, I do actually need to dodge. Alright, Lightning. Uh, Lightning's faster than that, is he? Yeah, he's faster than that. Um, okay, one, one semi pen. <laughs> <laughs> on a high explosive that's disappointing but the carrier is doing a good job of um of uh like hitting the destroyers which is very which is very nice to see and refreshing okay i've got the high explosive loaded loaded so i'm going to get some parting shots out at the lightning and back to the armor piercing because there's a broadsiding amagi sitting right there uh yeah that's better uh, the, the high explosive does a very good amount of damage and um, has a very good fire chance, but uh, the penetration is no is not great. So you can't do the British battleship thing. There was a was there was is the Akka still alive? Was he around here somewhere? Or did someone kill her? Okay, anyway, Charles Martel. Uh, is he sailing straight? He's not looking at me, so I'm assuming that he's going to stay his course. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's satisfying. <laughs> Oh, the Amagi's seen me. Okay, I'm just gonna ignore you. You see the amount of damage the Amagi's done to me. I mean, it wasn't a bad shot, right? He did 7,000 points of damage. It's just that um, on 56,000 hit points, I don't really even notice that. Uh, Charles Martel, second salvo out. Can we kill him from here? Uh, yep, we got him. <laughs> Delete. All right, uh, there comes some, I think these are Martel Torps. So yeah, they don't have range. Uh, yeah, we get a couple of aircraft kills here. But uh, Amagi, um, you are sitting stationary, broadside on, towards a Soviet battleship at 12 km. Do you think that wise? Uh, let me teach you the error of your ways. <laughs> and ploink! <laughs> but you, you, you see the penetrations are a little bit of a mixed bag at this range. I mean, an Amagi is a, is a battle cruiser, right? That thing has very little armor, actually, for tier 8. And uh, yeah, we do get the full pens. But I did bounce something off. Might have been a turret face or something. So a couple more shots out. Amagi is reversing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And there's another bounce, right? So um, this happens, and this is why. Oh, okay. We've got lightning problems. All right. Now, so I can't kite away. I managed. I mentioned that earlier. So over to the high explosive, and I'm gonna have to take these torps. But I have 44,000 hit points left. I don't think the lightning can one shot me. Um, and I do have to keep this angle, like, you see this, you see, you see the angle I need to keep in order for the secondaries to go out. And the auto secondaries aren't hitting anything. But um, I'm just waiting for him to make his, to make his turn. So I can use the, uh, are, you, are you coming? Okay, my main battery's out. Now he's smoking up. So full turn in, but I'm going to take these torps. There's no question about it. At this range, he can't miss me. The thing is, he's not going to be able to kill me. So, and you see, at this angle, I can't use the, the secondaries. So I do need to... Do need to turn a little bit, and now the auto secondary is opening up. So now he's going too far in order to get his torps away, and my main guns are reloaded. So now he's dead. And yes, I did lose um, 25,000 hit points there, but I've got a heal on cooldown, so a uh, heal of cooldown, so it's all good. 
Uh, and m meanwhile, the Mayhem is bullying our, our carrier. Hey, don't bully our carrier. He's doing a great job. So, um, carrier survived. Well done. Which means I can now start taking the Mayhem under fire. Okay, please sail in a straight line. Please sail in a straight line. Please. No, on, don't turn. Bollocks. <laughs> that would have been a nice blap if I could have could have hit him like Oh, he was trying to torpedo the battleship over there. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, that's why he turned. Okay, anyway. Um, carrier. Carrier is dropping the Mayhem. But um, yeah, he's making headway there. But uh, battleships dodged and is running away. West Virginia, well done. I'm coming. I've got the high explosive loaded. Don't worry. I got this. Uh, just let me go around. Just let me get a. Let me get clear of that island. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. I got this. Don't worry. He's not gonna get any more torps off. Uh, yunk, and there he goes. Okay, back to the MP. Oh, no, there's nothing left actually. I think we've. Um, yeah, the Mayan has failed to torpedo something. I think. Well done, West Virginia. Uh, yeah, there's just the Amagi left. So. Um, I think we've won this pretty comprehensively. Uh, well done, team. But uh, yeah, this is this is what you what you would wh how you play this this ship. In my opinion, it's a predominantly long range ship, but um, extremely precise with the precise aiming skill active. Uh, at close range, you do have to your secondaries are not all that useful because they do have slightly weird angles, and the auto secondaries can't hit anything. Uh, destroyer sized at least but um, the main guns have excellent high explosive okay uh, Shapayev takes them out <laughs> but yeah the main guns have excellent high explosives and uh, the armor piercing penetration can be a bit on the May side occasionally still I think this is a very good ship and the especially the the one gimmick uh, again forget about the four damage controls don't 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 even think about it but the gimmick obviously is the precise aiming three, which uh, is similar to what the Lenin does, where um, it turns it from to a sh from a shotgun into a sniper rifle. So, um, is this overpowered? Probably not. Uh, I mean, yes, lots of hit points, but uh, German ships have hit lots of hit points, and you can kill those as well. If she gets under concentrated fire, um, she'll melt like every other ship. Armor is good. Uh, range is is okay. Guns are okay. Uh, and I always find it a little bit in, a little bit tricky to, you know, see a real distinguishing factor in in battleships. Like with with some things like cruisers, you mix um, you mix around, and you have things like British light cruisers, which are extremely different from things like German heavy cruisers, in how you play them. Whereas in battleships, it's all a little bit more close together. But I think this fits very well very well in the current meta. That is a very very good long range ship. And uh, the only thing I'm not super sure about is what to do with the Japanese line at this point, because um, playing things like, um, I haven't tried the tier seven yet, the tier seven Soviet battleship, but um, playing things like the Nagato and the Amagi might be uh, getting a little frustrating. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody. And we'll be continuing um, on Thursday. See you then. Bye bye.